Hey guys, got another review for a slightly obscure product that you may or may not have heard of that is kind of cool and kind of lame all at the same time. Um, this is the Focusrite VMR, which stands for Virtual Reference Monitoring. Um, it's basically a teeny little audio card um, that is bus powered by USB. Comes with its own little bit of software, which we'll pull up in a second. And basically, it's got one output, it's got a head, headphone jack output, um, and the whole idea with this is if you're like me, you're in just like a room in a basement, <laughs> you know, the acoustics might kind of suck, my room happens to have this like wall that juts out and it's not a perfect square and it, or a rectangle and it, it's small and it... This is a way of helping you reference your mixes on something else, different pairs of speakers, different kind of rooms, um, to get a vibe of how it might sit in in uh, in different rooms. Um, kind of a cool concept, um, really cool concept actually, especially if you're um, lacking a pair of reference speakers. Uh, let's say you don't have any reference speakers. Um, pick up like a pair of KRK headphones, one of these guys, and you could at least get a decent sounding rough ballpark mix going on on your computer without, you know, bugging the neighbors at 3 a.m. Pretty cool. Um, also, you know, hey, how does your mix sound on a flat screen TV in a, in a living room? How does your mix sound on a pair of Yamaha Whites? How does your mix sound on a pair of Atom speakers? How does your mix sound on a pair of Genelec speakers? It'll give you a ballpark idea of how, how, how you're doing. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Um, <laughs> you can probably already tell that I'm not totally sold on the thing. Um, a big knob, that's just your volume control, and it does have a SPDIF out as well. Um, so it's basically just like a teeny little audio card um, with just a headphone output as yeah, your primary uh, thing. It doesn't have like another pair of outputs you could connect to like a speaker. So that kind of defeats the purpose. The whole point is that you throw on some cans and you, you know, listen to the software that way. Um, I used it on Suds for Spuds for a bit and, and then stopped. <laughs> um, I found... You know, the whole idea with this is that you don't have to, like, leave the room. You can just reference it right then and there. Uh, you don't have to go get in your car and throw it on or go throw it on your your, your speakers in your living room or whatever. Um, the problem I ran into was that I felt like referencing it on other physical speakers and hearing what your mix sounded like in a car was a way better barometer than something like this. In other words... I still couldn't tell if the bass response was what it needed to be. Was there too much bass, too little bass through something like this um, until I got in my car and threw it on and went, holy shit, I don't have nearly enough bass or I have too much bass or this is too much, too boomy or whatever it is. So um, it's a cool concept and it's not too terribly expensive and for some people this might be a fantastic um, little piece of, of uh, technology. I feel like we're just not quite there yet. Um, and it depends on your headphones. I mean, if you're trying to do this on like some Apple, you know, ear pod headphones, I mean, it, it's this isn't going to work. Um, I happen to have some KRK headphones and it still didn't really work with those. You know, I still couldn't really tell what the bass response was up to, you know, accurately enough to, to dial it in correctly. You know, what do you need for something like that? you need speakers actually pushing air in some sort of a, of a setting, whether it's a living room, a car, or your home studio. Um, so let me pull up the software, we'll take a look at that, and uh, show you guys the, an overview of that. Okay, so here we are with the VRM, um, what I called v, VMR earlier? Sorry, I've got Steven Slate stuff on the brain. Uh, VRM, Virtual Reference Monitoring uh, Software. Um, so you've got three main different listening environments, a professional studio, a bedroom, and a living room. Um, and then you've got your selection of speaker over here, a whole bunch of different speakers. Um, not universal for each room, though. Uh, and then a, a pad if you need to you know, turn down your output level. Um, a little info box, which, uh, oh, there we go. For me, the software is being a little buggy. It's being weird right now. But just giving you some information about your environment, about the speaker, about you know, you know, the, the technical stuff that's going on here. The important thing, you know, the reason why you're you're getting the software uh, is all of these different types of speakers that you have to choose from. Um, so there's an Atom, 
uh, or we'll start to take, take it from the from the top. A, a Japanese white classic, a KRK, or a tone, a Passive American Studio, British Studio, Genelec, another KRK, um, an Adam, a Rogers, and a Sterling. And those are the ones that are offered in the professional studio. In the bedroom, it's a KRK Rocket, British uh, 90s Hi-Fi, 80s Hi-Fi, computer desktop, budget micro system, LCD flat screen, Genelec KRK, and then a, another uh, another KRK and a Sterling. And then in the living room, we've got British 80s and 90s Hi-Fi, <clears throat> a uh, LCD flat screen, Genelec and Sterling speakers. So, so like I said, not not universally the exact same speakers per listening environment, which actually kind of annoys me. I, I would actually rather prefer it to be uh, all the same. That way, you could get maybe a, a an easier comparison. But um, so I mean, th that's basically the idea. And and you just kind of you're mixing and doing your thing, and 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 you're just sort of throwing it on to hear what it sounds like going through American passive speakers or through, you know. Uh, a budget micro system, you know, and, and you just kind of click around and you take a listen to those, uh, you know, different, different, different things. Um, how good is it? Like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure it's really worth spending the time doing when in the process of mixing to reference something. I, I think, uh, I think actually getting out there and, and just referencing it is, uh, is a better way of going about it. Um, but if you're in the kind of situation where you either can't afford a pair of decent studio speakers, which is probably uh, a good time to bring that up. I mean, if you if you could only afford some some really bad re uh, reference speakers, maybe something like this actually does make more sense because um, you're kind of getting a hell of a lot more for your money than uh, you know than just buying some you know entry level KRK or an entry level M audio speaker or something like that. You know, if you're if you've got a hundred dollar budget for speakers, maybe maybe it makes more sense to pick up something like this. Um, but if you can afford a good pair of speakers and I've thrown down some decent cash on my particular speakers, I've got a pair of Adam a uh, A7Xs, um, which are, I think, what did I spend? About a thousand dollars, maybe a little more, twelve hundred for my for my pair of speakers. Um, you know, I mean, if you can afford a good reference pair of reference speakers, you know, those are the ones to to listen to, or you know, to to trust. I think. Um, so at any rate, th that's the uh, that's the software um, software end of all of this. I mean, it's fairly well thought out, which is cool. Um, it's just bus powered, so you know, I've got it just right now plugged in. Uh, via USB, um, which is cool. Um, so it, it's a, a pretty idiot-proof kind of design, and it's not crazy expensive. I think it's like a hundred bucks, and the software um, updates came along free along with it. And Focusrite makes good stuff. So um, the box itself is a little cheap. It's pretty plastic. It's like it costs a hundred bucks. So um, all things to kind of consider. Um, would I recommend it? Nah, I mean, if you can afford speakers, just buy speakers and and save save this money to buy a decent pair of headphones. That's what I would that's what I would recommend doing. Um, thank you for watching the video. If you guys find this useful, please hit like and subscribe. Um, and uh, you know, please check out the other stuff we have uh, uh, on our on our channel. We've got our full uh, original band stuff. All the AME stuff uh, is up there. Our album, music videos, lyric video, etc. is is up there. Thanks for watching. Bye.